This video isn't sponsored by Head & Shoulders, but it should be. Hello, Emmett Ryan from Ball on Europe here, and as the title suggests, today's video is all about the arrival of Shetty Osman at Panathinaikos. The Athenian giants, the reigning, defending EuroLeague champions, have added yet another big, big name to their roster. This video, we're going to discuss all about it, the implications. We're going to discuss why we're a bit surprised he was available to be gotten, and also what we expect to see next when it comes to what has been an insane summer of movement in Europe. But mostly it's about what Shady's going to mean for Panathinaikos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It always helps. And now let's get to it. So, yeah, uh, the big surprise for me was that he was there to be got. Uh, like, obviously, great job at Panathinaikos to take the opportunity to, you know, embrace it and to get a player of this standard. But this is not an Evan Fournier situation, and that's not some sort of green-red, uh, you know, uh, sort of battle stuff. Like, Fournier's that few years older. He's at an age where he doesn't want to be playing for a team that's, you know, going to be struggling for a while and that's what the Wizards are he if he if he's going to play he wants to be playing on a winner and that makes sense for him to want to go back to Europe where he's still on a good deal Shetty's in a was in a better place basically Osman was in a much better place in his NBA career le before leaving than Evan was because Osman logged decent minutes for the Spurs last year 17.6 a game his shooting stats were pretty decent as well if you look at them like he was a relevant player admittedly not for a great team but he was a very relevant player for them and you look at a player who has the Shetty numbers and uh, you know him only being 29 and this is a type of guy who you expect is so serviceable at the NBA level that it's a very big surprise there wasn't more demand for him, as in so much demand that Panathinaikos wouldn't have been able to swoop in for him, that nobody really outside of the NBA uh, should have been able to swoop in for him. Because he obviously, there was the Lakers weren't guaranteeing anything, we know that, uh, or at least that's what we've heard uh, from Shetty himself, and there didn't seem to be anyone else coming out a guaranteed offer, and... That's just a surprise to me. Like, again, you see the other players who've come back. Uh, you know, obviously there's been your saving, there's Korkmaz. We're going to mention all these guys again in a few minutes. Uh, Vezenkov is obviously the also well-known one. You could see the route home and why it made sense in terms of where they are now in their careers. And by home, I mean back across the Atlantic. I know most of them aren't in their home countries. But then you look at Shetty and you go, Really? Really? He was available? So yeah, it's a big surprise to me. Like, this is a huge, huge get. Like, of all the many who have moved, uh, unless this Bertans to Dubai move proves to be accurate, and that's as much as because of where he's going than anything else. And it seems that the, the, the Bertans to Dubai is what everybody's saying is, is a deal. Uh, unless that proves to be accurate, I think we can safely say, at least from my perspective, this is the most surprising uh, move this summer when it comes to an NBA free agent going over uh, basically coming back to Europe, uh, for being a Euro, because I just didn't think there would be a situation where Shetty was available. I just genuinely didn't think anyone can get it. Great, great get by Pau. Absolutely brilliant get by Pau. Only praise there. I'm just amazed Pau, for all of their allure, for all of their, you know, financial knowledge and all the other great things that come with that, I'm surprised they still had an opportunity. That's how surprising this move is onto me. So now we get to the important thing. What's he going to mean to Pau? Yep, the fit is just wonderful. I mean, there's so much I like about this. I've got, like, notes here in front of me because of how much I like about it. Like, there will be a deep dive on the full roster much closer to the start of the season. So we're going to do three more roster deep dives. Uh, the next two, what we're deliberately not saying the order, will be Fenner and Zvezda. There will be a Pau one. That'll be after both of those. So... We will be keeping you waiting a while, Panathinaikos fans. Sorry about that. Uh, that's really because you didn't make that many changes and it's really your depth chart deep dive rather than a roster deep deep dive and what it means. But looking at Osman, there is a lot to like here based on the other moves around him. He's a three that fits a few roles thanks to his energy, his strength and his general reliability as a scorer and a defender. You know you can trust him in many different types of lineups. Like I'm thinking, think when you've got three guard lineups on the floor because obviously you've got certain depth there, a point guard you're trying to make 
make sure people get minutes. There's going to be some three guard looks. He can play that undersized four in that role when you're trying to go small ball. Uh, you know, I know Golden State back in the day referred to their death lineup. There may be an Ergen Ataman uh, death lineup, which features Shetty at the four, which, you know, you go, what? It's like, trust me, this could get very weird. But here's the flip side, which is what I really like about it, is that say Pau go double big. Panathinaikos, we've got a lot of bigs. We want to have two of them on the floor at once. And Shetty can be sort of, you know, a more energetic three than he already is. And he can do a lot more on the movement, on the keeping the spacing, so that they aren't losing what you get. Well, what you sort of, you know, do to yourself, basically, when you go double big. Like, he's going to be able to compensate greatly for that impact. So you've got both these aspects where you go small or you go super big. Shetty can do roles in both. That's very, very attractive to me in terms of how they use him. And obviously, the other thing to bear in mind is that say you just go with a conventional five-man lineup, he's a really good three. He's going to be a very high-grade three at this level. So, yes, uh, there is a lot to like here. Just everything about this move, I'm kind of going fit, quality, versatility, usage, the works. If Shetty stays healthy, this is all, this is all gravy. I mean, yeah, yeah, this, this could really work. This could, this could really, really work. Uh, it's a very, very exciting move for me. So, this move is exciting. There have been other moves this summer. There may yet be more moves. But what exactly is going on? So, yeah, EuroLeague teams have been collecting Euro free agents slash available players from the NBA like their Pokemon. Like, just to name a few, but a few, we got Sasha Vezenkov, Yurtsevin, Korkmaz, Fournier, there are others, Poku obviously comes to mind, and now, of course, we got Osman, and it's like there's been this absolute rush for them this offseason. Obviously, the main focus has been on the two Greek sides who are both trying to load up as much as possible in terms of talent and getting better. But it hasn't just been them, and that's the thing. It's really been out there. Like, Usman Garuba's back, for example. And, like, Usman Garuba coming back would normally be, even though everybody knew it was going to happen, a reasonably off-discussed thing. Who's talked about that? Like, come on, no one has discussed, oh, wow, Usman Garuba's back. Like, not, listen, Garuba. Garuba is going to be great this season. I really, really am high on him at Madrid this season. But, like... We haven't really talk, spoken about that that much, have we? Like, you know, there's because there's been so much to discuss that it's almost like you're waiting for the next big one to drop. Like, Bertans not going EuroLeague kind of twists the narrative a bit and could be quite interesting in the future. But for now, like, it's been pretty wild. So the obvious question is, are we going to see any more? No, but yes, is my answer. The no is... I don't think we see anything else between now and opening day of EuroLeague. But we've reached a stage, especially given what teams are willing to spend and willing to take risks on, that in-season moves, obviously, are plausible. And Panathinaikos fans know that as well as anybody else. Kendrick Lunn, spring to mind at all. He was pretty good. Wasn't there opening day last season? And, uh, yeah, he adapted. Now, Nunn adapted, and I've wrote about this several times, the speed at which Kendrick Nunn adapted is going to mislead quite a few players who are going to consider trying to come over in season if they're in a situation in the NBA where things aren't exactly going what they want. Nunn is an exception. I don't think most players will adapt at the sheer speed and comfort that Kendrick Nunn did. And that's not even a quality issue. It's a fit issue. Like He was going in a situation where he could largely be himself. And for a lot of players going over... You know, they aren't necessarily going to be that. They're going to have to adapt in some way. Like, basketball is, you know, a sport which involves learning your role within the, those you're working around. That's just team sports. And so I think we could see in-season moves. I think they're going to be extremely tactical. And I'm sure some players who are probably going to, you know, not make it through to opening day in the NBA and are thinking, well, maybe I could still end the early job, might be a little bit disappointed in what they actually get on the table. But in-season moves, definitely not ruling out. I think between now and opening day, which is only a couple of weeks away, folks, uh, it's not far, I think we've seen the last until opening night. I think. You can tell the complete lack of confidence in that statement, but I think we've seen the last until opening night. Before I go, uh, of course, 
please again as always subscribe but uh, thanks to all of you for your support the last uh, few weeks as you can see for about a month or so we've been building it up we're trying to keep building it up so please tell your friends show the love wherever you can and we've got a great season ahead for us all we do videos every monday wednesday and friday uh, wednesday's video is going to be a euro and the nba focused one so just bear that in mind for those of you who don't really want nba content we're going to have a mix of it we're working on a huge project right now ahead of the irish season even if you aren't a fan of irish basketball i hope you enjoy what we're trying because it should really impact the other work we're doing across the sport this season and yeah like listen thanks for the support it's really does mean a lot to me i had a rough uh, couple of days there because we had some audio issues and video that got fixed and then we had a laptop issue, which um, absolutely terrified me last night because my laptop looked like the battery was gone, it was going, it was never coming back. I might have to buy a new laptop and right now that's an enormous expense for me and would have, eat, would have probably cost me one of my trips to games this year. And I just couldn't take that risk, you know, well I could, you know what I mean. I didn't want to have to take that risk. Thankfully fixed, it, it, it seemed to fix itself, like the guys in the center had a look didn't even charge me because I thought there was nothing they should charge me for, but still gave it a nice clean. So big shout out to the Laptop Lab and South Great George Street in Dublin. That was huge support of them. And yeah, uh, that's it for now. And until next time, I will see you soon.